皆さんおはようございます日本の刀剣の歴史は何千年も前から続いておりまして最近アメリカで、まあ、戦後特にアメリカでは日本の刀剣それも何百年前の刀剣があちらこちらで発見されそして研究もされています。今日はですねスタジオの方に日系三世の方がなんと日本の刀剣の認定証まで賞状をもらいましたそしてなぜこの方がそんなに興味があってそして研究しておられるのか今日はスタジオの方でゆっくりとお話を伺いながら実物も見せていただくことになりますマイクさん Nice to meet you Nice to meet you Thank you for having me today I was very impressed That what the American guy shows so much interest in Japanese ancient art? Well, because I'm technically Japanese, you、yes. know, by DNA,、yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, my grandfather really liked the Chambara movies and、mm-hmm. everything. So when he was supposed to babysit me, sometimes he would. Take me to see movies down in the West l a Chambara movie. Yes. So I was only like six or seven years old. Really? <laughs>、yeah. Really? So it kind of made an impression when I was、uh, young. You what, was, what was your first impression when you saw those movies? They were pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first impression. Yeah, I'm、huh? kind of trying to figure out like, why my grandfather brought me here, but you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. But afterwards, it kind of. Spark something. So when I was about 10 years old,、mm-hmm. my father and mother wanted me to do something of a Japanese culture or oriented, either go to J school, like most people did, judo, kendo. And that time they just started to do Japanese karate in America. So the first wave of、uh, sensei just came over.、Mm-hmm. So karate was kind of new at that time. So there was a Studio that opened up recently in、uh, about 20 minutes from our house. So we went there and it was Japanese karate. So I chose karate too, instead of going to J school. <laughs> <laughs> More action, huh? Yeah, no, nobody wanted to sit there and do this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you find i n t e r e s t from the karate? So, karate taught me a lot about、uh, Japanese history too. We talked about that during our classes.、Mm-hmm. And you know, we started, as you advanced, we started using、uh, different weapons, you know, bow, sai, tonfan. And also, my teacher let me use a katana. So, katana? Yeah. So, that was, I guess, my first taste of、uh, actually using a sword or holding a sword. So, I found it very fascinating. So, from karate to katana.、Mm. So, it was kind of all related, right? Like Japanese budo, right? In a sense. But I didn't realize it because I was so young. But I just had a natural attraction, I guess, for katana. In fact, I saved up my Christmas and birthday money for a long time to be able to buy my first katana, a real one. Really? I was about 13 or 14 years old. Wow. So, where did you get it? San Diego, actually. <laughs> the real katana. Yeah, there was actually a sword dealer that was in San Diego, and he used to have this newsletter that I used to subscribe to, and I would always see the catalog and, ooh, I want to get one, you know, that kind of thing. So the real katana is from Japan? Yes, but it was actually made during World War II, and it was brought over here、uh, when Japan surrendered their weapons. So I guess a military. Person brought it over and you know, they had them as souvenirs, but then when they came to port, they took them to pawn shops and traded it for money. And yeah, so World War II, that katana, if it's made during the World War II, means the soldiers, Gunto, they,、yeah. Gunto, they carry it. So, yes,、oh. but the sword was you know, nothing special. In fact, it Was actually a terrible sword, but I didn't know it at the time. I loved that sword, I took good care of it, you know. And like in the movies, they do ton ton ton. When you get that、uh, sword, did you see any chips here, there, and、no. or rusted or no, no, it was, well preserved? It was clean, yes. Who did that? I was wondering. Well, a lot of times, many people who had swords, if they were stationed in Japan, they didn't get much use or wear. But if they're out in the 
Southeast Asia or in the tropical mm -hmm. areas, then the swords kind of got like, you know, boro boro, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little beat up. So most likely the person who had this sword was stationed probably in Japan. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you still have that piece? No, because after I found out how no good it was, I decided not to keep it. <laughs> oh, because it's not the way you're ex expecting or dreaming that hundreds and hundreds of years ago is a samurai sword. Right, like a real samurai ah, sword, you know. So you Just, got rid of it. Yeah, so I sold it and I bought an older blade mm -hmm. at the time. So I bought a sword that was from the 1500s. So I was like, wow, you're so happy. Be happy at that time. You got the real thing now. So, you know, kind of upgraded. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> but, do you still have it? Yes, that sort I still have. Wow. And then that didn't happen almost till 10 years later, though. So I didn't buy my second sword until I was about 20. Three years old. So you keep that one for so long. Mm -hmm. Because it's I used precious. to use it for EI, mm. EI practice. And I, I, st I treasured it at the time. You know, yes, I cleaned yes, it, yes. I took good care of it, everything that you're supposed to do to the sword. Right. But I found out how much I didn't know about swords. You only just, because you like it and you cherish it, you take a good care of it, that's all. Yeah, I was like this about it. You know? I had no idea about what sword is all about. Well, it's like they say the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm, you know, like mm -hmm. that. So until I was about 22, 23 years old, I had no idea any of this other historical, artistic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, all this that I know now today existed. So more than just Budo in that sense. So everything changed when I met like a few key people in my life about 22, 23 years old. And then, you made them here. Yes, but they were Japanese. Yes. And they introduced me to a different world all of a sudden about. Uh, are you familiar with the Akabaneto? Heard about it. So when MacArthur was control of Japan, they ordered all these weapons to be confiscated, including old katana, family heirlooms, everything. About three million swords were collected. Three million? Yes. My goodness. In Akabane, one of the co main collection points, they said there was about 750,000 blades just piled up like cordwood. And uh, they estimate about two million swords came back as souvenirs to American GIs. Uh, two sensei saved a lot of these swords by ex begging to MacArthur, please don't destroy them because they were destroying all the weapons. And uh, he said, okay, if mm -hmm. you help. Mm -hmm. And they had to separate the war-produced items that were just strictly weapons from the antique and heirloom artistic swords and historical those, ones. Those are really owned by samurai or and their family. Is, I yeah. see. Wow. Mike san after commercial, can you continue to tell me about your friend, fancy story? Sure. Thank you. So MacArthur finally decided to divide those during the World War II's uh, soldier's sword and the art piece or the ancient samurai or their family-owned pieces. They separate. Then what happened? Well, so he still didn't know what to do with them once they collected them. So they had all these swords, so they started letting the GIs take them as souvenirs. Really? So that's how they made their way to America. Wow. So I met a friend who used to travel around the United States. Several dealers did this. They used to advertise in uh, local newspapers. You want to sell this sword, who want to buy it like that? Oh, uh, we'll do appraisal work for you. And if you oh. want to sell your sword or whatever, we'll please bring it to this hotel on this day. So we would go to a town, mm. maybe five or six different towns in a week. We would get like two or three hundred swords sometimes at a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was amazing. So who is going to evaluate how much this one worth, how much that one worth? Oh, my friend used to do that, you know, in that sense. He is uh, American? No, he was Japanese. Oh, he's a Japanese. But living in America. Okay. And then he started teaching me about Japanese how swords. To... Right, how to evaluate. And then little by little, we used to sell the swords to Japanese sword dealers that came from Japan. Mm -hmm. And they would meet us and they would buy the swords that we bought from the local towns. So 
I made friends with several of these Japanese sword dealers, and they started teaching me as well. Because I was pretty young at the time, so mm -hmm. they had more fun teaching me, you know, mm -hmm. after we do some mm -hmm. business and say, Mike, you know, this sword, remember this, this is how you tell real from fake, this is a good one, this one's not so good. So after like 10 years, mm -hmm. my education grew just from looking at you everything. You more and more. And from different people. So I was mm -hmm. quite lucky that all these dealers that came from Japan were some of the biggest dealers in uh, Tokyo and uh, Osaka, Okayama. So they had a, what we call Meikiki, a very mm -hmm, good eye. Mm -hmm. So learning from them was invaluable. But one of the dealers, uh, he said, I'm kind of stuck. So I should go to Japan to study. Oh. He said, you can only learn so much here. Because it's a foreign country. Right. So there's not enough resources and I, I need see. a better wow. teacher. So he invited me to Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, for about a year, I thought about it. Should I go? Then I finally went. And then he started me on another journey. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of journey is that? So from that point, we went, it was really weird. He picks me up, boom, we go straight to another mm -hmm. sword dealer. Mm -hmm. And they're talking, talking, talking. And then all of a sudden, okay, Kante. I'm like, what's that? Did you understand what they were talking about? A little bit. They were talking so fast. They were so excited. So then they come and they put a sword in front of me, and I have to guess who made it. Yeah, right. Kante. So Japanese style Kante, the handle is covered, and you cannot see the name. Oh. So you have to look at only the upper part. Right. The hamon, the right. jigane, all the other characteristics, and come to a conclusion that this sword is from this time period, this wow. school, maybe this maker, or around Amazing. this person. So they tested me. Okay. And I'm just like, why are they doing this? You know. Mm. But I kept doing it. And then mm. they talk and talk again. Mm. They said, okay, you did good. It so passed. <laughs> I said, now what? So then they drove me to the next day they took me to the MBTHK which is the Token Hagabutsukan mm -hmm. and uh, there was a monthly gathering mm. Kante mm -hmm. for members mm -hmm. so they had five swords for Kancho and five swords for Kante so this was Sambo Nusatsu so if you missed they give you a hint and then you try again so you get three tries per sword so they said go I go, but I can't write it in Japanese. It's okay. Uh -huh. Write it in Romaji. Okay. Uh -huh. So first one, Maramasa or something mm -hmm. like that, right? So I did it, turned it in, and uh, that's when I met uh, Kobayashi Sensei, and he was doing it, and I, uh, hello, nice to meet you. I'm from America. So he's all, okay, so this one you wrote in English. So he was making sure, you know. <laughs> it was kind of like Hazukashi, uh -huh. right? But I scored uh, 95 points. What was the full point? 100. 100. 100. Wow. And, then, uh, they said, okay, you can meet the Tanobu Sensei. Ooh. And I said, oh, I heard of him. He's like God. Master. Yeah, like okay. the highest. So the week after, they took me and introduced me to mm. Tanobu Sensei. And he accepted you as a disciple? No, oh, he tested me first. Oh, he tested you first. <laughs> and then he taught me a little bit, a little bit. Then I think it was about, I forgot what year it was, for the first... Zenkoku Taikai I went to. Mm -hmm. Then everybody, I'm all excited. I Were get, you the only foreigner there? No, everybody, a group of foreigners, a whole bunch of us, like 25 of us went. Oh, those are for the foreigners? Everybody, every I member see. around the world. So. Oh, I see. About uh, 600 something people. All around the world? Huh? Yeah, all together. Oh, interesting. And uh, that time the Kaicho was uh, Hashimoto Ryutaro. Mm. Yeah. So the prime minister. Yeah, for he was Kaicho for right, the, right. Uh, really? that time. So everybody, I'm so excited. First Taikai, I get to go. They have all these great swords mm -hmm. you could touch and look at. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is great. Mike, you go here. Mm. I want to go there. No, Mike, mm. you go here. Mm. Why? Mm. Kante. <laughs> wow. What's this? This is a one chance, one sword, one minute. So I had to try the Kante. Your honorable job. So five sword, one minute per sword, 
one chance, you write and you put your answer in the box. One minute. One minute. Only one minute. One minute. So they call Ippon Nusatsu Kante. So everybody got to go to the fun room. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that had to go to the other room. I'm, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, boy. So I did it, did it, and I did, it, I did terrible. It was so hard. Mm -hmm. So I put my answer. Then I went to the fun room. Okay. Yeah. Then afterwards, there's a banquet. Mm -hmm. Then everybody's, oh, should we go? They're going to do a lot of speeches in Japanese, and it's going to be kind of like, you know? <laughs> Then my friend goes, ah, let's go eat somewhere else. Okay. Almost I did. Mm -hmm. Then my friend from Japan who brought me there goes, Mike, you have to come sit here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then they're talking, talking, and we had no idea what's going on because it's first Taikai. So, mm -hmm. you know, then also they talk about the Kante answers. And uh, kind of got that one. Got that one. Nope, missed that one. Listen to the answers. Nah, I didn't do anything. Then they're talking first place, second place, mm -hmm. third place. Then my name. Then I said, what happened? My friend goes, I don't know. He goes, I think you better stand up. They stood up. Why? <laughs> he goes, you I don't won. know. But stand up, you know. So mm -hmm. I stood up. Then they had to go on stage. And we have to bow in front of uh, Hashimoto Rutaro and then bow to the director for the kyokai right. and get the certificate. Social. I'm like, I don't want to go up there. <laughs> Is that the one? No, not the uh, Not that one. No. I just happened to see there's yeah. one there. No, this is the first one I ever tried. Really? Well, Mike Sang, well, one week goes by so fast. I think I should ask you, since you both brought so many swords here, and there, and there, and there's some wording there, and it's so difficult for me to read, and I'm pretty sure for American can teach me <laughs> what that means. I mean, next week, this week, we run out of time. Oh, okay, that would be fine. <laughs> but that was interesting to, to understand why brought you so interested in the, a Japanese sword uh, art work everything so next week we are going to talk about actual things and show us what it says oh definitely i would thank you so much for the first now i know how you got so interested in the <laughs> japanese sword thank you very much All right.